My name is Jennifer Saik. I'm the Managing Director at Treliance. I'll be continuing our series on export controls red flags. When you get beyond the overarching regulations uh, of sanctioned or embargoed countries, denied or restricted parties or individuals, the applicability of the export control regulations really hinges on the research itself. Are the materials, chemicals, equipment, or other hardware or software or technical data, are they on the government's control lists? If any of them are on the EAR's Commerce Control List or the ITAR's United States Munitions List, that definitely raises a red flag that the university needs to dig further into any government requirements. The trick is how do you translate these lists into practical terms for faculty and other PIs? What are alternatives to sending them the links to these long and complex control lists? Well, one approach is for administrators and compliance officers to categorically highlight to the departments and to faculty what are the types of things that are controlled that are relevant to their research endeavors. So for example, do your electrical and materials and bioengineering departments, do they work on lasers, sensors, semiconductors, fibers, viruses, bacteria, nuclear related things? Those are just some examples of types of things that are export controlled. The trick is to boil the, that down um, in a more categorical fashion, to boil that down to what's directly relevant to a given department or faculty's research endeavors. So that wraps up our series on export controlled red flags, and I hope this was helpful.